Hi, this is Brett with Piano Aha. And in this video, we want to talk about perfect fits and specifically perfect fits at the piano and how you can memorize them all. So first of all, let's talk a bit about a fifth and why it's called a fifth. This is an example of a perfect fifth. The reason it's called a fifth, and we'll get to the word perfect in a moment, is that we count the lines and the spaces between, but also including, the notes themselves. So we have line, space, line, space, line. So there's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. That's why it's called a fifth. So we'll get around to talking about the perfect part at the piano. So this is the fifth that we just talked about. The perfect fifth. What we want to do is find a pattern to be able to memorize all of the perfect fifths at the piano. So let's move this perfect fifth up the keyboard as so. So what we're doing here, since perfect fifth is just a word for the distance between these two keys, if we keep the distance the same and just go up one key, this must also be a perfect fifth. And we go up another key, this is also a perfect fifth, also a perfect fifth, also a perfect fifth, etc. What we want to do is find a pattern. Are the perfect fifths always mixed between white and black keys, or are they always both white or always both black, or what's the, what's the pattern here? So let's take a look at them all. All white, all black, all white, all black, all white, all white, all black, all white, all black, all white. So you could have the suspicion they must always be of one color, so unicolored. If the bottom note is a white key, then the upper one is also a white key, and the same goes for black. But at this point, we see that if we actually went up one more key, that we do end up with a mixture. So on the note, when the B flat is the lower note. And if we go up another key, we have another fifth where there's one black key and one white key. If we go up yet another, then we are back at C where we started. So the important thing that we just discovered was that from B flat and from B, there are exceptions. You could say, beware the B, beware the B, because those two perfect fits are mixtures of white and black. So I promised that we'd talk about the word perfect. Why is it called perfect? Well, if this is a perfect fifth, there must be something that's not a perfect fifth. This, for example, would be a non-perfect fifth. That's a diminished fifth. And this would be an augmented fifth. So the thing that makes it a perfect fifth is the distance between these two keys, as I said. And we can count these distances and see that for the diminished and the perfect and the augmented, it's always different. So if we looked at the diminished, we see one, two, three, four, five. Turns out there's five keys between them. And here there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And for an augmented, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So there's a different number of keys between them. We're interested in this one, in the perfect fifth. Now there's one perfect fifth, there's one fifth that uh, might surprise you. This is white, this is white, this is white, right? These are all fifths. And this one, it turns out, if you count the number of keys between them, is not a perfect fifth, but a diminished fifth. Again, the lower note is the B, so beware the B. If we wanted to make this diminished fifth into a perfect fifth, we would either have to raise this key up, which would give us the one example we saw before, or we could lower this one down, which would give us the other example we saw before. So, to review, the perfect fifths are all only of one color, except we must beware the B. So now that you know the perfect fifths, there's a lot that you can do with them. For example, you can learn major and minor chords much faster because the perfect fifth is the foundation of both the major chord and the minor chord, the only difference being the note in the middle. Be that as it may, that's the subject of another video. For now, just know that each perfect fifth has either both white keys or both black keys, with the two exceptions that we talked about from 
B flat and B. And by the way, that also goes for their notation. Here is a perfect fifth from B flat. You see that the lower note has a flat, the top one doesn't. And here is a perfect fifth from B, where the upper note has a sharp and the lower one doesn't. And with that, I wish you happy ahas. And beware the bee.